Good morning, everybody. Thank you for uh, attending this meet, this presentation on Michael Sprinkle. He, he was a unique individual. I think we've learned some of the many things that he was involved in. Uh, I'm involved in an industry of sealing cracks, repairing bridges, tunnels, and things like that. And one of the things that we have to say is a lot of people consider what we do as a company to be mysterious or you can't, you can't back it up with calculations and data and things like that. And that's when Michael Sprinkle stepped in and he said, just like, just like you said, he looked at something, he said, I think that works, but let me prove that it works to all the naysayers. He was one of the first DOT people to see what we're gonna talk about here, high molecular weight methacrylate, crack sealers, and convince through his research and his findings that it was a viable treatment, it was a viable material, which is very important because we've seen that the industry, DOT industry, is quick to dismiss, okay? Unless, unless it's developed inside of a DOT, they're quick to, to overlook it. And Michael wasn't that way. He, he said, if anything, he would try to find a way to make something work as opposed to just you know, looking at it quickly and saying, well, I don't think that's going to work. So uh, in the 1970s, uh, methyl methacrylate, MMA resins <coughs> with very low viscosities, 25, less than 25 centipoise, were evaluated as effective materials for sealing cracks, uh, primarily in bridge decks, but concrete surfaces in general. Uh, the evaluation goals, they wanted to determine minimum crack width that it could penetrate, uh, what bond strength the cured MMA would obtain once it was in the cracks and cured? Uh, would the MMA restore any of the initial strength of the structure that was treated? Um, what method of application would achieve the best results? And that's important because where this all started out in the, in the late 70s is 180 degrees from where we are today. Uh, and what are the safety concerns with field applications? 1970s, Brookhaven National Laboratories in Brookhaven, New York, worked on the development of a method of applying polymer impregnated materials to bridge decks. Uh, polymer impregnation is a process where you, you actually apply a polymer to the surface of a bridge and you cure it with heat and hopefully it will sink into the bridge, cure, and seal the pores and seal the cracks in the bridge deck. Um, in this case, what they did is the decks were dried for an extended period of time, up to six days, to get the moisture out of the decks. What they did is installed kerosene heaters below the deck and heated the deck to 300 degrees Fahrenheit um, for up to six days to get the, drive the moisture out. Okay, allow the concrete to cool down to 100 degrees, which sometimes took a day or two. So now, now we're, into, we're into, before we've applied anything, we're over a week <coughs> into the application. Okay, then they would come back and they would apply a half inch layer of clean, dry sand to the surface, actually to, to bond or to hold the material while it was penetrating down into the pores and the cracks in the surface. Um, apply the MMA resin on top of the surface reapply the heaters and apply the heat until the MMA was cured. One thing that I didn't put here because I just didn't think it looked good is the second bridge that this was applied to, the bridge caught on fire. Uh, that's not contained in any of the reports that I found <laughs> for Brookhaven National Laboratories. Yes, but uh, that was something that if you were involved in the industry at the time, you knew that it caught on fire. Uh, so, but the, in this case, the MMA resin successfully penetrated the sand and sealed the concrete surface. The problem was the MMA um, didn't get great penetration into the cracks. They, were, they got about a half an inch maximum, okay? Um, the other thing was the, because the viscosity is so low, if there was any kind of cross slope, or super elevation to the bridge, the MMA went to the low side of the bridge. So it was very inconsistent. You've got a lot of material on the, the downside of the slope and you, got, you starved it for material on the high side of the slope. Um, 
The other issue, like I said, with fire is MMA resins have a flash point of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, when you're using kerosene heaters to heat it, to cure it, um, that's a very, very big issue. Um, so it, it was determined that this method wasn't going to work, not in the field with, with the way things happen in the field. If Michael looked at this and said, this technology is not going to work, we, I wouldn't be standing here today, okay? But he didn't. He looked at it and he said, let's figure out what, what we have to do to make this work. In 1980, 1980s, Roman Haas developed a new resin called high molecular weight methacrylate. And some of the advantage of the HMWM, which is very hard to t say for some people, uh, they both ex exhibited very similar viscosities, 10 to 25 centipoise, okay? The HMWN did not use heat to cure. It was cured with an initiator, cobalt naphthenate, and a promoter, cumene hydrogen peroxide. Um, no heat curing required. The gel time with the HMWM could be extended. Extended gel time and reduced viscosity increase equates to greater penetration both in pores and in cracks. Um, and the flash point was over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So the problem of catching bridges on fires was solved. Okay. In 1987, our forward thinking Michael Sprinkle, uh, research scientists at the time for the research council conducted research into polymer overlays, polymer crack sealing, and one of the things that was included in his research and his paper, which I was very impressed when I tried to do, Sandor helped me tremendously here finding some of the publications that Michael did, and you'd never know it in talking to him and knowing him personally, but he was very prolific in, in writing things and doing research. Well, he did a comparative evaluation of concrete sealers and multiple layer polymer conic Create overlays in September of 1980 it was published, 87 it was published. Um, he was one of the first DOT engineers, like I said earlier, to see the potential in using HMWM to extend the service life of concrete bridge decks. He was, what he was trying to do is find out, did it work, how well did it work, and what was the application method to be desired. He classified sealers into two categories, hydrophobic sealers, basically they leave the water on the surface, beat it up, and don't let it penetrate, but they have a, a life cycle. With, with moisture and traffic and everything else, their life cycle is, is a unknown, so to speak. And then he classified HMWM in the water blocking sealers, where they're actually going in, filling pores, filling cracks, curing out and the water cannot get into the surface until you wear off the concrete that contains the cured material in it. Therefore, solving the, solving the problem of ice and moisture getting into a bridge deck, getting to the steel, causing spalling and corrosion. What he did was, he and other researchers, they treated specimens, uh, HMWM treated uh, concrete. They ran it through 100 thermal cycles, uh, they saw a reduced permeability uh, result. Uh, the tensile rupture strength uh, was an average of 294 PSI. Um, and in the field, they tested the surfaces with sand broadcast uh, to add friction. That was one of the major concerns with initial applications that you'd put this coating, it's basically a coating and a crack filler, you put it down on the surface and it would render the bridge very slippery. Well, Michael was one of the ones that came up with, let's broadcast sand to give us the friction until we can wear it off the surface. He even developed a test method that's used today, which is called the Virginia Penetration Test Method, and it's very simple, like Mike was very simple at times. You take a coffee cup, you fill it with sand, you pour HMWM on top of the sand, and it's supposed to go all the way to the bottom of the cup to show that it can penetrate. And it's specified in many manufacturers and many DOT specify that test procedure. Very simple, but it works. He had very, he tested various HMWM manufacturers um, and as a result of his work and some of the things that have happened in the meantime, we now have different types of materials for different applications and different types of application methods. 
Uh, you have the standard HMWM, which has elongation of 1 to 10 percent. Those would be for non-bridge deck surfaces, where you don't have a lot of movement and things like that. You have a flexible material, which has elongation up to 30 percent. You could use that on bridge decks where there is movement in a bridge deck. There's HMWM for very, very low pressure injection. We're talking injection with hand cartridges for treating individual cracks as opposed to epoxy injection, which is time consuming, expensive, and also there's a chance because of the pressure, you could exacerbate the situation by blowing delaminated concrete off of a bridge deck surface. And recently there have been developed in developments in the manufacturing or design of HMWM with thixotropic properties. So we've now gone from, when Michael first looked at this, horizontal surfaces only, we can do vertical surfaces and we can do overhead surfaces and get the same performance as we do for treating a bridge deck. Flexibility. Like I said, formulations have tensile strengths of 1 to 10 percent. These are for dormant cracks. These are plastic shrinkage cracks, you know, small, small cracks that are not moving around. And then, as you see in this culvert here, uh, they treated the base of the culvert to, get, to prevent moisture from coming up from the ground into the culvert and causing corrosion. Uh, as well as, uh, on the right, you see a bridge deck treated with high molecular weight methacrylate like <coughs> we saw in an earlier slide from the first presentation. Flood coating, I, I think that picture on the left might actually be Virginia. Uh, flood coating and a broadcast of sand on the surface. Methamethacrylate, this is for the low pressure injection that I spoke about. Same best basic technique, except instead of using injection equipment, using a caulking gun, a two component caulking gun. Very, very high penetration, you can get penetration uh, of a foot, two foot, three feet. If you're in a foundation, you can get penetration of three feet into a crack. Uh, very successful. The thixotropic, this is a perfect example on the left-hand side here where it's a thixotropic high molecular weight methacrylate applied to a bridge abutment that is completely deteriorated because of de-icing chemicals and free stall. And in this case, the state is saying, all we want to do is seal it off so we can get a little bit more time out of it, two years, three years, five years. So it's a very inexpensive way of treating uh, damaged or faulty concrete. Put it on with rollers or brushes. Gravity fed, as we said, you see, here's an application of a gravity fed uh, surface. And on the right hand side, we put fluorescent materials into it to see how it penetrated down into the, into the concrete. You can actually see it penetrate into cracks that you didn't see before you applied the material. This is the injection. It's a little hard to see, but on the right-hand side here, you can see these, these cylinders are approximately 12 inches long, and we got penetration almost to the bottom of the cylinder. It all depends on how wide the crack is and um, how much dirt and, and other foreign objects are in the crack. Um, thixotropic formula, this is vertical. These, these bridge piers have been 100% coated with a thixotropic material to prevent corrosion uh, from environment, from salt, uh, from the water. And you see the penetration again. It follows the crack. So in conclusion, original developed uh, crack sealing concrete bridge decks was extend the service life of deteriorating bridges. However, manufacturers have developed different various formulations enabling applications for horizontal, vertical, and overhead surfaces. Uh, HMWM effects, effectively seals cracks and surface porosity, prohibits the intrusion of moisture, and contaminates that lead, that should be lead, that has, leads to the, the use of, um, of this chemistry by DOTs. So Michael was one of the first ones that said, I want to look at it, I want to prove that it's working to himself and to the Virginia DOT, and other DOTs said if Mike Sprinkle thinks it's okay. It's okay. I want to thank you for that, for this opportunity.